You ever heard the story about Thomas E. Dewey when he was the federal attorney for the city of New York? He had, he was working very late one night and he had uh, his assistants with him, a bunch of guys. And they were all Jewish, it turned out. And they said, look, why don't we go home? It's late, but we'll stop by so-and-so and we'll get some pastrami sandwiches. Dewey was a wasp, wasp. He'd never heard of pastrami and he asked what it was. And they gave this explanation of this succulent, delicious meat and how it was served on rye, soft rye bread with mustard. And he said, oh my God, that sounds delicious. I'll have one, but I'll have mayonnaise on mine. So this guy was <laughs> up in the clouds, really, uh, for to be a New York prosecutor. But another assistant he had was a young woman. Uh, although Dewey gets all the credit, he deserves a lot of credit for slamming Lucky Luciano away. A fair amount of the credit should go to the woman who built the case. She was an assistant prosecutor. Her name was Eunice Hunton Carter. And she's what she laid the foundation for the case that Dewey brought to court. She was the first black woman to graduate from Fordham Law. And she was also the first black woman to serve as assistant DA in New York. She was also the only woman on Dewey's team. And what she did was, they gave, because she was the only woman, they gave her prostitution and said, see what you can do here to build a case. Well, she started to interview these women and she slowly built a structure where today it seems ridiculous that we don't know. But at that time, people didn't understand how the mafia worked, its structure that it had had layers and bosses and captains and so forth. So she's interviewing these prostitutes, these pimps, a lot of drug addicts, and she determined that, roughly speaking, Luciano, well, they said Luciano was taking in 10 million from 5,000 girls nationwide. The, the organization was taking in 10 million, but 10 million in 1935, 36, much more today. So she takes her case to Dewey. She says, listen, I think so we've got, I just need to put some pressure on these women so they'll cooperate with us. On February 2, 1936, Dewey authorizes a massive raid of 200 brothels in Manhattan and Brooklyn. And it's a huge gangbuster thing. And he takes measures, or she took measures actually, to prevent the police from impending the raids. She assigned 160 police officers outside of the vice squad to conduct the raids. She didn't trust the vice squad. They were just really corrupt. And she instructed them to wait on corners where they were going to raid without telling them what they were going to raid. And then they got a call in their car uh, to raid such and such an address. They got 10 men and 100 women in this day-long raid. But unlike all the others, uh, raids where the women were usually brought in, fine five dollars and left, she kept them in court and she set the bails at ten thousand dollars, an enormous amount of money. A lot of these women, as I said, were drug addicts. They began to shake and, and they would say and do anything to get the hell out of there and get back onto the streets. But that was her case. And so they told her, look, yeah, he's Luciano's the guy in charge. A lot of them didn't know who was in charge. A lot of them could care less. Uh, just so they can get away from, get out of jail. A grand, so they build a case, a grand jury indicts Luciano 90 counts of compulsory prostitution. Luciano thinks, well, the hell with this, and he flees to uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas, which was then a haven for bad guys. It was incredible. All the bad guys are on the run. You can go to Hot Springs. The sheriff there in the town was remarkably corrupt, and so it was safe there. But Dewey, you know, he's no slouch either. I mean, Carter did a wonderful job. But Dewey, between 1935-37, he won 72 convictions and 73 prosecutions. That's pretty good. He lost one case, in other words. So he goes on the radio and he says, the governor of Arkansas is personally protecting Luciano, which is why we can't get him. That night, before, as, as the radio program ends, 20 Arkansas State Rangers take Luciano by the scruff of the neck, they drag him out of, the, uh, out of hot springs and away from the protection of the sheriff there, put his butt on a plane and send him back to Manhattan. I think technically they did have extradition papers, but they, they, they didn't, they weren't gonna wait. Uh, just threw him on a plane and got him out of there. The grand jury heard 68 witnesses. Now, 40 were prostitutes or madams. 
So 40 out of 68 witnesses. One of them with the name Koki Flo, Koki Flo Brown. She testified, you know, we have to take what she says with enormous grain of salt. So she says that Luciano told her, I'm going to organize the cat houses like the AMP. AMPs were grocery stores. Uh, we could syndicate these places. I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know that he would really, would he discuss that with her? Uh, she also gave on the stand now, she gave, she explained all the strong arm methods that they used to keep the girls in line by the pimps. And she says, Louis, uh, Luciano said to her, first you got to step on them. Talking won't do no good. You got to put the screws on them. Against his lawyer's advice, Luciano is outraged because he was guilty as a day is long, but there is a method to law. You know, there's a procedure and it was he was being railroaded and nobody really cared. You know, he was, he was a bad guy. He insists he takes a stand, which is in his own defense, which is really, really stupid. And Dewey is obviously a very good lawyer and he whacks him for hours. I think four hours he had him up there. And I think Lucy, Luciano, who didn't have much of an education, he was a bright man, but he wasn't well educated. And I think he just assumed he would go up on the witness stand, say his piece and sit back down. Well, when you go up there, the prosecutor will decide when you sit back down, if he's still got questions. Four hours of questions. He runs Luciano around in circles and he, he gets caught lying. He gets flustered. Really bad. He just should have stayed there. In the end, Dewey gives a seven-hour summation of his case. Seven hours. The jury found Luciano guilty on all counts. It was by that time it had been reduced to 60 counts. And he sentenced to 30 to 50 years. It was the longest sentence ever handed out in compulsory prostitution case. You know, uh, Joe Valachi, the guy who testified against the mob, he said, Charlie Lucky wasn't no pimp, he was a boss. And he summed it up. Luciano probably didn't know what was going on day to day. He got the money. And, you know, there were so many guys. Luciano had a huge organization. So many guys got the money before he got around to it. So, <sighs> railroad's a strong word, but it comes in close to that. the Christmas Day slaughter, the Lincoln's birthday mutilation, and the Groundhog's Day beheadings. Before we begin the questions, my client would like to read from a prepared statement. Go ahead. I would like to direct this to the distinguished members of the panel. You lousy cork suckers, you have violated my Fargan rights. This Samanambaching country was founded so that the liberties of common patriotic citizens like me could not be taken away by a bunch of Fargan ice holes like yourselves. Thank you very much. What are the names Benny the Hump, Roland Carpiti, and Izzy the Nose mean to you? Don't mean a thing. Recognize this? No. Can you explain how your fingerprints got on this gun, which was used to kill everyone in the building at 110 East 40th Street? Where do you get that, huh? If a train left New York at 300 miles per hour, an accelerated speed 15 miles per hour, and traveled a distance of 683 miles, tell me, sir, what time would that train reach Chicago? That's a fucking silly question, what, sir! What time did I have to train me up for you? What did I do? Bro, you are fancy. These are my boys. We're doing your prep. Go ahead, your prep. Hey, honey, what's Go ahead. They're arguing again. Yeah. Connie and Carlo are constantly oh, arguing. What a fine lady. She's always crying. I'm going to talk to this brother. Sit down. Sit down. You never had to fail between the man and the woman. Sit down. Your business is. Here with Tom and me. All right. Is this wall so tough? Well, he'd risk a union slowdown 
He let that star actor be exposed as a junkie. But I mean, is he really tough? Would he risk his honor for this, uh... I mean, is he a Sicilian? Forget about it. And this little act was his child. Is that true? Yeah. And fine, yeah. All right, send Luca Brazzi to me. I think we're going to find a way to reason with this Mr. Jack Walsh. <laughs>